everyone, my name is Lydia. I'm a double major in mechanical engineering and material science engineering. And today I'm going to take a few minutes to discuss the project I'm working on, which is creating a CD microfluidic device to capture and isolate cancer stem cells from non tumorigenic cells. So this is the team. It consists of myself as a team leader. My teammate is Gemma, and we're being advised by Dr. Kalinsky and Dr. Zane. So before I go into more specifics and details about the device and the project, I'm going to uh, have a brief introduction about what cancer stem cells are, since that's the main focus and what the project is really centered around. So cancer stem cells are like non tumorigenic cells in that they have the ability to differentiate, self-renew, and grow rapidly. However, the main difference between the cancer stem cells and these non tumorigenic cells is the ability to form tumors in an individual's body. And because of this, it's the main culprit in allowing cancer to persist in an individual's body. So, as shown in this illustration, the yellow dog represents cancer stem cells. In conventional or what the cancer therapies are out there right now, they don't target these cancer stem cells. And that allows cancer or the tumors to persist. However, if we're able to develop a treatment or a therapy that specifically targets cancer stem cells at its core, we can be able to reduce or eliminate these tumors, and that'll be a step or progression to eliminating cancer. So this is one of the reasons why, say for an individual who undergoes chemotherapy, and they think they're cancer-free, however, a few months or years later, they find out they have cancer again. And it's because of these cancer stem cells' ability to like harvest themselves in an individual's body, and reemerge and start forming tumors um, in other locations. And because of their ability to differentiate and travel, they can start in one organ and travel to another organ in an individual's body and form more tumors there. So um, this is uh, kind of the focus of what we're trying to achieve. Another main difference between cancer stem cells and non-tumorigenic cells is their difference in cell membrane capacitance. So cancer stem cells have a higher cell membrane capacitance than non tumorigenic cells. So we're going to use this property to our advantage in this project. So a bit of background about this project. So the goal, as the title says, is to create a CD microfluidic device to separate cancer stem cells from non tumorigenic cells. More specifically, the objective is to separate approximately 90% of the cancer stem cells using a process or phenomenon called dielectrophoresis. Um, in dielectrophoresis, a non-uniform electric field is created, and this promotes the separation of the, uh, the different cell types, the cancer stem cells the, between the non tumorigenic cells. Also, we would like to collect and separate the cancer stem cells, uh, or the different cell types, based on time, so a temporal separation. We're also planning on creating two different types of designs or prototypes, and we would like to determine out of those two de uh, designs which would provide for most um, effective uh, purity and separation, and which one would promote the better electric field. So why is this device important? Why, why would we want to create this? Well, ultimately, this is going to be used as a research tool for researchers and people in the pharmaceutical company to understand cancer stem cells so they can create therapies and treatments around this and to target them and another step to um, eliminating cancer or understanding it better. So here's a very simple uh, SOLIDWORKS image of the device. As I previously mentioned, we're using the phenomenon of dielectrophoresis, or D. And as I mentioned before, um, it creates a non-uniform electric field, and this polarizes the cells. And for a positive DEP, the cancer stem cells are going to move in a direction where there's a stronger electric field. So in order to create this dielectrophoresis, we're creating interdigital electrode arrays. And, um, we are, we've discussed to use two different types of shapes. One is a rectangular shape of arrays of electrodes, and the other is trapezoidal. And we want to determine of those two um, shapes, which one would provide for a better electric field and DEP. So because of this DEP, and it's going to separate the cell types, it's going to create a velocity profile. So those cells, so the cancer stem cells that are gravitating more to the electric field, they're going to be more to one side of the channels, and that's going to make way for the non tumorigenic cells to move faster through the channels. So based on this time, um, we're going to collect the non tumorigenic cells first, and then after some time, we're going to release the function generator, release the electric field, and then we will collect the cancer stem cells. So that's how we're basing it off um, time. 
The two designs we're looking into, it's just based off different materials. So one of the materials we're considering is PMS. So a little bit about this uh, schematic. This uh, big square on the bottom is a glass slide. Um, the smaller, uh, oh, and this is electrode. Over the electrode, um, there are two different layers, and these two different layers are going to differ depending on the uh, material type. So for the PDMS, we're going to uh, coat the glass with electrodes, a small layer of PDMS over it, and then attach the uh, PDMS channels on top of that. The reason for that is because um, apparently there's been some difficulties in plasma bonding, which is one of the ways we want to uh, create an adhesion between the two PDMS layers with glass slide and PMS. So in order to combat this issue, we're going to have the small layer of PMS, and then through plasma bonding, we can create a better adhesion with the PMS channels in order for to prevent leakages and to allow fluids run uh, fluids run well through the channels. For the CNC machine plastic idea, where the this layer, the small layer, instead of having a thin layer of PMS, we're going to use a pressure sensitive adhesive. And then on top of that, we're going to have uh, the CNC machine plastic for the channels. So some of the current work we've been doing. So in order to understand DEP more, we wanted to do a uh, trial run to see how uh, they would separate. So we use polystyrene beads, and polystyrene beads exhibit dielectric properties. So that would be able to mimic um, what the cancer stem cells should behave. So uh, Dr. Kulinski had a sample electrode slide. And what we did is we took the suspension of polystyrene beads, drop, put a drop of it on top of the, uh, the electrodes, attached a function generator, and we were able to see a separation of these polystyrene beads. Um, we were also able to view, uh, view this through channels. We also wanted to test if plasma bonding would work between two layers of PMS. So we, we conducted two different trials. In the first trial, when we took it out of the plasma bonding machine, we could see like some air bubbles. So, um, and then we tried it and there was leakages. However, the second time we did it, there were no leakages, so we can say that um, should we bond it well, that plasma bonding will work between two different PMS layers. We also created the two different types of electrodes. Um, these were created from SolidWorks, so these are solid primes and SolidWorks image of the trapezoidal and the rectangular shaped electrodes. Some future work. So we realized that the PMS channel uh, molds that we have in the lab are a little bit too big for these one inch by one inch um, electrodes. So we're going to have to create a new mold for the PMS channels in order to fit properly onto the device. Also, towards the beginning of next quarter, we would like to <coughs> test out the prototypes, both prototypes. And should that work with polystyrene beads, we would like to test it on actual uh, blood samples. So we, we received $400 in your off funding, and uh, so far we didn't have to pay too much just uh, for the electrode map, mass and uh, clean room facility use. We may have to put this more, but we have enough in the funding to try that. So what are some technical improvements? There has already been research that uses uh, microfluidics and DEP to separate cell types. However, what's a little bit um, an improvement for this device is that it uses a CD to promote more separation of these cell types based on their densities. So before we put it into our device, um, it will already kind of be separated. Also, we are want to evaluate how DP reacts or the phenomenon of DP using different shaped electrodes. So um, it was rectangular and better than the trapezoidal. So we want to be able to observe that. Um, and also, we want to achieve a better separation or purity of separation um, using the following uh, criteria, design materials. So overall, we learned really a lot through this project. Um, I'm not a bio person. I don't have a bio background. However, I learned a lot about the difference uh, between cancer stem cells and non-tumorigenic cells and how cancer stem cells are like the main culprits in promoting cancer through an individual's body. And uh, my teammate Gamma and I, we, will, we learned a lot about dielectrophoresis, its applications, and how it can be used to separate different cell types. Um, also, we learned about different types of bonding, way, different ways to bond different materials, and um, the effectiveness, and how to like overcome some obstacles with using some materials. 
So that is my presentation. Thank you for listening.